What is up, guys? Welcome to Historic St. Louis. I am Justin, your host, and welcome back to the show. Okay, so today, guys, we are going to be taking a deeper dive into the history of the Weldon Springs Superfund site. Now, this site is in St. Charles County, Missouri, just west of Chesterfield off of Highway 40. And the main reason that this site is popular is because of a giant limestone dome that is covering up a bunch of nuclear waste. So we are going to take a deeper dive into the history of that site. I've already posted a video saying standing on top of nuclear waste with a very clickbaity title. That's a great one to check out to actually see the site, but I didn't necessarily go over the history of the site that much in that video. So what I want to do today is go ahead and go over some of that history with you. So let us begin. Give me one moment here. All right. How are you guys doing today? All right. So about Weldon Spring, I'm just going to kind of read off of this. Most of this information comes from either Wikipedia or the Environmental Protection Agency, also known as the EPA. Uh, I have verified all of it. I've been to the site. I've been to the Interpretive Center. So everything that I'm going to tell you today is 100% accurate. And I think it's important to know the history of nuclear waste in the St. Louis area. Uh, even though this is St. Charles County, it's right on the border of St. Louis County. And there's a deep history here of nuclear waste causing disease, not necessarily being disposed of properly. So it's scary stuff. So I want to go over a little bit about the site. So back in 1941, the U.S. Army acquired the site in Weldon Spring, Missouri. Now, in order to do this, they actually took over the towns of Hamburg, Howell, and Tunerville. Those of you who live in St. Louis are going to recognize one of those greatly, and that is Howell. It was named after someone from the area, and now sitting there is the Francis Howell School District. One of their schools actually sits on what was part of the ordinance works, it was an area that wasn't as contaminated, and they decided to give the school district part of that land. Now, what I don't go over in any of these slides, but I just want to address, is part of the area is now the August A. Bush Conservation Area, uh, where you can go to the park. It's native prairie. Everything out there is absolutely beautiful. You can go fishing. They stock the lake. As of right now, the radioactive levels are considered safe. Now, they do still monitor this site very closely. They go out there and check it. One of these days, I'd like to get out there with a Geiger counter and see what I actually find. But anyway, uh, so yeah, back in 1941, uh, from 1941 to 1945, the Army produced explosives at the Weldon Springs Ordnance Works. That was land that they had gotten basically by eminent domain, uh, and they were manufacturing DNT, TNT, basically anything needed for wartime uh, to create bombs. Uh, it does actually mention in here that after the war, the government transferred ownership of some of the land to the August A. Bush Memorial Conservation Area, which is run by the state of Missouri. Uh, another portion went to the University of Missouri for agricultural purposes, and then several other small patches were transferred to St. Charles County, and as I mentioned, the Francis House School District. So that is in this slide. I didn't actually realize that. Um, but in 1951, what was remaining of the site was transferred to the U.S. Atomic Energy Administration, which was used to process uranium ore, something that is very radioactive, very unsafe for humans to really be around. And we didn't know that much about uranium at the time. There's a lot of belief that Mallinckrodt and some of the other companies that were involved in this did. Uh, but we didn't. So people would go to work and they wouldn't be wearing masks and things like that. And a lot of people did end up developing cancer and dying because of it. So uranium ore was processed there from 1951 to 1966, which was used in the making of the atomic bomb as well as in the making of Agent Orange. So the picture that you are actually seeing on this screen are the stairs to the top of the capsule. There's 47 stairs uh, with a mixture of gravel and mulch on the stairs to get up there. And then all the stone that you see in the area is limestone. So the Weldon Springs site was actually partially a quarry, and it was a limestone quarry. So that was something that was natural and easy to find there. Uh, we'll get into the dome a little bit more in a couple of minutes, so I can tell you how much waste is actually sitting under there, and it's kind of terrifying. All right, so let's move on here. Okay, so this is where the start of the cleanup began. You kind of have the history of why it was contaminated. Basically, weapons production for the Army, uh, for nuclear bombs, things like that. 
So on October 15th of 1984, the EPA proposed listing portions of the site with radioactive waste on the national priorities list. It was very scary. They knew it needed to be taken care of. Things were just sitting there rotting away. Uh, I think one of the scariest things is if you look online, you can find pictures of containers that are unmarked and just oozing stuff out. Uh, we didn't know what these were. They could have been radioactive. They could have just been oil containers. There was no way of knowing that. Uh, and they were just sitting in abandoned buildings there. So obviously by 1984, they're like, hey, guys, we need to take care of this. Let's do something. And they proposed listing on the national priorities list. Three years later, in 1987, on July 22nd, it was finally listed on the priorities list. Just like anything in our government, it took a while. <laughs> uh, the contaminants that were on the property included uranium, thorium, radium, as well as TNT and DNT residue. So not only are there a lot of dangerous toxic chemicals on this site, but there's a lot of dangerous toxic chemicals that shouldn't necessarily be mixing together. Uh, what I don't mention in here is less than three-fourths of a mile away is one of the largest water sources in St. Charles County. So Weldon Spring is right along the Missouri River, uh, right where St. Louis and St. Charles County are separated. It's the border of Chesterfield and Weldon Spring, which is St. Charles County. It's very close to a source of drinking water for people. It, it, it's just a very bad spot for this to have been. But it was easy for them to acquire the land, and obviously during war times, being on the river was a benefit because it meant they were able to get things in and out a lot easier. Uh, so this from 84 to 87 was only the quarry portion, portion of the site. This actually wasn't even the ordinance works <laughs> where most of these things were being produced. So we'll get to that in a moment. Um, what I have here picture wise, there are all pictures of the dome that is covering things up. So the far left is the same staircase I showed you. The middle picture is actually from quite a bit above the dome of waste. And that really gives you an idea of just how large this dome actually is. It, it's ginormous. I've been to the top myself. Uh, it's the highest point in St. Charles County and you can see for miles from the top of there. Uh, on the one hand, it's beautiful. You know, it's a gorgeous view. It's a very pretty day while you're out there, right next to the wildlife area, so you can go and do some fishing or walk through the park, take the trails, whatever you want to do. But you still have it in the back of your mind that you're walking on top of radioactive waste, which is both scary and interesting. So that very last picture is what's at the top of the dome. There's not a large area where you can walk around. It's just right in the middle there. And those little placards that you see on those stands tell you things either about the site or about what you're looking at. So kind of give you an idea of what you can see from that direction, as well as giving some of the history of the Superfund site and what they did to solve the issue. Okay, so... Remember, July 22nd, 1987 was when the quarry was added to the national priorities list. So two years later after that, on July 14th, 1989, was the first time that the Ordnance Works was proposed to be on the national priorities list. The site wasn't listed until February 21st, 1990, but they were able to do it in that one year quite a bit quicker. Not even a full year, really, only a few months. Because part of the rest of the site was already listed on there, so they knew they needed to do something like that. Uh, as you can see, areas of concern included seven unlined lagoons where TNT wastewater was stored, TNT production lines, two DNT production lines, drainage ditches below the TNT production lines, and eight areas where explosive waste were burned. So lots of dangerous chemicals just still just sitting there. And they went in, they tested the wastewater. Obviously, they knew it was unsafe or they wouldn't have gotten gotten to work so quickly on it. Uh, the picture here is actually of the Ordnance Works when it was still in operation. So as you can tell, uh, you know, the Army, when they were producing these things, were a huge employer. Uh, a lot, a lot of people in the St. Louis area near West County and Chesterfield and then coming from St. Charles County inwards worked in that area. And it's crazy because you can see off in the distance there that there's not much developed there now. Developed there even as recently as the 1990s. 
Um, now, Chesterfield and that area of St. Charles County are crazy developed. Uh, obviously, those of you locally know about the flood of 1993. A lot of people not in the area know that also, but this is Chesterfield and Weldon Spring, directly on the, Miss the Missouri River. Both of those areas were deeply underwater. Now, the scary thing is, obviously, this is a contaminated site, and rivers carry things. So, you know, though this is on the list in 1990 to be taken care of as a priority list, we're going to get into a minute of when things were actually resolved. Okay, so... Custody of the Weldon Spring site was transferred to the Department of Energy in 1985 to conduct a cleanup operation to clean up all the contamination from the prior activities. They called it the Weldon Spring Site Remedial Action Project, and it included it concluded with a completion of a 41 anchor on-site disposal cell. But look at the year that that was completed. That was not completed until 2001, 11 years later after the final approval of getting things taken care of and possibly the scariest thing about this is the cell providing long-term provides long-term isolation for 1.48 million cubic yards of low-level radioactive and chemical waste now I realize it says low level in this slide and this information is actually directly from the EPA the thing is low level is relative uh, a lot of things that the EPA says are low level when it comes to contamination with radioactive waste aren't necessarily low level when it comes to your health. So that's something to keep in mind. So that's basically all of the history that I have on the Weldon Springs site. It's, it's a really cool place to visit. Uh, I think it's important that everybody in St. Louis and really everybody everywhere learns more and more about this site because it was one of the first super fun sites from the EPA. And speaking of that, I want to dive deeper this month and next month into nuclear waste around the St. Louis area. So uh, today this video is going up. This is the deep site in the Weldon Springs site. If you guys want more information, I highly, highly, highly recommend if you're in the St. Louis area, go out there. Visit their interpretive center. See what you can learn from that. Uh, or they do have a website on the Department of Energy's website as well as the Missouri Department of Natural Resources has a website related to it. But it's not the only site in St. Louis that's been contaminated with waste. So on January 12th, I want to take a deep dive into Route 66 State Park, which used to be called Times Beach, Missouri. Uh, just a little bit of background on that. The roads there were covered with something called dioxin. They were trying to save money by fixing the roads that way. Turns out dioxin also used in the production of Agent Orange and incredibly unsafe. So nothing that was there when it was a town is any longer there is no sorry is no longer there i want to dig deeper into what happened to those people why the town was called times beach because there's actually a really interesting story there and kind of get into the history of that my hope weather depending is on january 19th to go to route 66 state park and the times beach museum which is on site and kind of take you with me through the area and show you what is still there, what isn't there, and show you some of the artifacts within that museum that is on that site. January 26th, that's going to be a big date because I want to talk about the current situation at the Westlake Landfill. Here in Bridgeton, Missouri, which is a portion of northern St. Louis County, there is a landfill that has nuclear waste buried in it. Uh, nothing has been done about removing it, but the EPA suppose, excuse me, supposedly is working on it. But I think it's very important to note that there is a fire going on at this landfill. And although it's not in the same area as the nuclear waste, day by day it does get closer. Uh, there's people that say it's safe. There's people that say it's not. I want to get down to the facts and tell you guys my opinion and kind of show you. And then on February 2nd, the final video that has to do with nuclear waste in the St. Louis area Mallinckrodt, one of the largest weapons producers in the world, uh, who were involved in Weldon Spring and basically every other nuclear site. The airport site near Lambert St. Louis Airport, where, <coughs> excuse me, where there was also nuclear waste that had to be removed during that same Weldon Spring project. And other sites around the area that are kind of related to the same project as Weldon Spring and the manufacturing of Agent Orange and nuclear weapons. 
After that, I want to get back into what this channel was originally created for. So between March and August, I want to visit St. Louis landmarks that are historical in some way and or just really cool places that I want to show you guys. And I want to bring them to you in a new and exciting way that you've never seen. So I'm really going to work on editing, upgrading things a little bit on my end, getting a new camera, and showing you guys how cool St. Louis is. Um, I think a lot of the issue that we have here is negative media. Uh, there is a high crime rate here and a high murder rate within the city of St. Louis, but that's not what St. Louis is. So I want you guys to all see what St. Louis is really about. Also, starting in March, visit us on the Fly Guys YouTube channel for our I Spelled Travel Wrong, the travel podcast discussing all things travel. So I have another channel called the Fly Guys. Uh, me and some other friends that work within the travel industry. If you guys didn't know, my full-time job is I'm a corporate travel agent. Uh, not going to say what company I work for because none of my opinions or anything on that are going to be related to them. But... I want to discuss travel with people that are just as passionate about it as I am. So look for that coming in March. Uh, once the channel is up and running, there are a couple videos there right now, a hotel room review and a uh, airplane takeoff. But once there's more videos on that channel, I will make sure to link it in the descriptions on this channel. And you guys can go ahead and check that out. So last of all, I want to thank you guys for watching today. I know this isn't the traditional type of video that I've made in the past, and I know some of you may find it kind of boring because I'm basically showing you a PowerPoint presentation and you may feel like you're back in school. But my deepest hope here is that you learned something from today and that more people are made aware of nuclear waste still being a problem within our society. I mean, these things were made years ago when we were really deep into making nuclear weapons but they had lasting effects that are still affecting us today so i think it's important to discuss all these things and learn about them but then after that i want to get back to having fun showing you cool places st louis is such a rich in history city i mean our art museum has been there since the 1904 world's fair and has a gold roof what's cooler than that so thank you guys for watching and i hope to see you in the next video and y'all have a great day Bye bye